is ministry here on earth. You've been with me from day one. You've been with me from Jump Street. You must also testify. You must also testify. Now, the word in the Greek when he says you must also testify, the word testify means to declare or you must witness or literally you must speak well of me. To testify concerning somebody means in the, the, the proper sense is to tell the truth about them. So if you're going to tell the truth about Jesus, you're going to speak well of him. You're not going to tell somebody, well, let me tell you about Jesus and say, well, you know, he, he, he's just okay. I don't on him too much. You know, he's a little flaky. No, when you talk about Jesus, you have every right to speak well of him. You have the obligation and the right and the privilege and the honor of talking about the Savior of your soul, the healer of your body, the restorer of your spirit. And so he says, you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Believers, then, are witnesses for Jesus. Why? Why? Because we are anointed by the Holy Spirit to speak concerning the truth. In John, the, the epistle of John, not the gospel, but the, but the epistle of John, he says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. Everybody say, I'm anointed. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you're anointed. So in other words, you have a divine unction on your life that enables you to declare the truth concerning Jesus Christ. When it says you're anointed, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to run around and that you're going to clear and empty hospitals. Hello. It simply means that you have an ability and a power and a right and a function to declare and to decree what you already know about Jesus. You have an anointing from the Holy One. Why? Because the Holy One lives inside of you. He says, so you have this anointing and you and I then are anointed by the Holy Spirit to speak concerning the truth of Jesus Christ. Now, he talks about the Holy Spirit doing something, he says he will commend or he will testify about me. How is he going to testify unless he has an agency or unless he has a vehicle through which to operate? So he's not talking about necessarily a separate function of the Holy Spirit apart from what you as a believer does he's saying that in tandem with the ministry and the person of the Holy Spirit that you will move under the unction and the power and the direction of the Spirit to be able to declare and to decree who Jesus Christ is and the Holy Spirit will empower you and enable you therefore if you have this ability therein begins to lie the understanding of why we do it in other words, if you're empowered, then you're supposed to tell. It's an old song we sing. I, I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. If God has revealed Christ to you by the Holy Ghost, then it is incumbent upon you and me to talk about it, to tell the story. God, by the Spirit, causes us to have insight, to see and to perceive things that we do not have the ability to in the natural realm. 
He allows us to have insight and perception concerning the truth. Everybody in this room, if you know Jesus Christ, and if He lives in you by the Spirit of God, you have insight into truth. Truth lives in you. You are in communion with truth. You have a relationship with truth. And you have then insight into truth. Our insight into the truth then arises out of the divine nature of truth itself. Why? Because Jesus said, I am the truth. So the divine nature of truth that resides in you has a relationship with you and you have a relationship with it. And so you have insight into he who is the truth and there is no error in him. So there is a quick understanding, there is a quick recognition of the fact that who lives, the one who lives in you is Jesus the Christ, the living God, the Son of God, and that you have that knowledge inside of you. There is insight into him who lives inside of you. You begin to see, you begin to understand, you begin to realize, you begin to perceive and comprehend things about him that you couldn't know aside from him. Communion with him brings truth concerning him out of you. Ah, okay. Communion with Christ brings truth concerning him out of you. In other words, Jesus said to the disciples, you've been with me from the beginning. Or there's things that you know because you've been walking with me. There's things that you know about because I've talked to you. There's things that you have understanding of and revelation knowledge of because I've communicated divine realities and divine truths to you that you couldn't get anywhere else. And so when you talk about me, those realities and those truths are going to come out of you. Why? Because you're in fellowship with me, you're in communion with me, and I've imparted these things to you so so that they might be made manifest through you. So our communion with Christ then brings truth concerning him out of us. Watch this. And it gives witness. It gives our witness what's called impetus. What, what is impetus? Impetus is a drive. It's a force. It's a zeal. It, it, it's it's a, 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 a sense of, uh, of, of right now. It's a sense of uh, reality. It's an impetus. It, it's, it is a compulsion that impels and compels you to, first of all, open your mouth and say something. And then, secondly, it empowers you to do it. Why? Because what you know about him then gives you the ability and it gives you credence. You're not talking about what somebody told you. You're talking about what you know. I know that I know that I know that he is who he says he is. Why? Because he's revealed himself to me. And so... The more I understand about him, the more I get from him, the more truth that he imparts unto me by communion with him, the more credibility I have when I open my mouth. There comes a point at which you must have more than just, I was blind, now I see. That'll work. It worked for the blind man. But you got to have more than that. Especially in this day and age. When we are bombarded and confronted with every doctrine of demons that is possibly known to man. You got to have more than that. And so the more comes out of your communion with him. He said, you've been with me from the beginning. You say, well, you know, Pastor, I wasn't around back in those days. Well, let me just flip the script on you tonight and tell you that from the moment that you received Christ, your witness of him became united with your identity as a disciple. The moment you received him, you became his disciple. 
whenever your moment of reception was, from that very moment, from that very second, you then became a disciple. I didn't say you become an apostle. I didn't say you became a bishop. I said you became a disciple. What is a disciple? Greek word mathetes. It means a learner, a follower. From that very moment, you accepted him and he revealed himself to you. You became a disciple and you begin to follow him. Your identity then, from that moment, was set. You are now, from that moment, from the beginning of your revelation of who he is, you are now, from that moment, a disciple. That's your identity. Some are good disciples, some are not so good. Some are faithful, some are not so faithful. But the fact remains that you are a disciple. He said, but you also must testify, for you've been with me from the beginning. But you also, everybody say also. The word also is very, very interesting there because it means even you. See, it's not just you also. No, it's even you. Point at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, even you. Yeah, even you must testify. Even you must declare. Even you must speak well of him. Even you must give witness of who he is. See, there's no exceptions. I'm sorry you can't hide under this one. Everybody is included. No one is exempt. Well, what qualifies me or what, what puts me in a position of being included in the even you? The fact that I know him. If I don't know him, then even me doesn't count. But I know him. Does anybody know him in here? Yes. Then even you. So when we begin to answer, answer the question of why do we testify, it's the even you, the even you, but you also. It's emphatic. Believers are to bear testimony of Christ in the power of the Spirit. Why? Because it's their testimony. See, we're not asking you, Jesus isn't asking you to give somebody else's testimony about him. He's not asking you to go up to somebody and talk to somebody about the nature of who Jesus Christ is and tell them, oh, yeah, let, let me tell you about him. Well, you know, there was this guy that I, that I knew uh, back in, in the church, and, and he had a real experience with Jesus. You know what? That might be true, but it doesn't hold much water. No, you testify because you have an experience with him. You have a testimony. He said, and you then, who have a testimony about me, must testify. Amen. You do it in the power of the Spirit. And the Spirit will then enable you and commend Jesus to others through you. Jesus said, don't worry about what to say. He said, open your mouth and fill it. And I've said this many times that a lot of people take that literally and so they don't study anything and they know nothing and so they just open their mouths and they expect God to fill their mouth and he's going to just speak through them. Well, no, that's not the way it works because he speaks from the inside out, not the outside in. What you download then gets uploaded. If you have nothing downloaded, you have nothing to upload. The Holy Spirit will only enable you based on what's inside of you. He's not going to enable nothing. But he will enable you to speak concerning the nature of who Jesus Christ is in your life. Because you have a testimony, then you and I are responsible for bearing it. See, it's my story. I don't expect you to tell it. 
Your story is your story. I don't, you, you shouldn't expect me to tell it. I'm not your mouthpiece. You're not my mouthpiece. I am my own representative of who he is. So the why then becomes very, very emphatic and it becomes very, very clear and very, very apparent that if I have a story, I must tell it. You and I are uniquely chosen by God to be witnesses of the glory of God in Christ Jesus. To talk about him, to declare him, to announce him, to promote him. You know, it's amazing to me that we can uh, get all worked up over things and, and, and talk about those things and, and, and get really enthused. And I, I'm mad at nobody. I'm just talking about realities tonight. Ooh, have you, you got to go to this restaurant. You talk about some food. Oh, no, you, oh, no, you really need to go check this out. You haven't seen that movie yet? Oh, girl. There are people tonight who are all up on Facebook and on texting, and, 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 and I don't know what's happening with the game. I don't care. But the, the fact is that there are people who are all enthused right now. Guess what? That game's going to be over. It's not going to change anybody's life. And everybody gets all worked up, and I ain't mad at nobody. But I'm just saying that you and I have a right and we have a responsibility to be enthused about the Savior of the world who saved you and saved me. The one who delivered you and delivered me. The one who put your name and my name down in the Lamb's book of life and I'm going to live with him. For, see, that affects my eternity. That changes everything. A game changes nothing. Except somebody's pocketbook, amen. But not yours and mine. Only a participant. No, you and I are uniquely chosen by God to be witnesses of the glory of God in Christ Jesus and to do His work on the earth. What is His work on the earth? To testify concerning Him. What did He tell them? You also must testify about me. Because you've been with me from the beginning. The church at large, the universal church in the world, the church's present witness of Christ is dependent upon the apostolic witness as it's written in the New Testament. Let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. What we say about him must agree with what the apostles taught us. It must agree with the word. It must agree with the account that's in the pages of this book. It must agree with the gospel message. It must agree with the accurate portrayal and description of who Jesus Christ is as he revealed himself to those first disciples and those apostles. So that the witness of the church is consistent with the witness of of what's called first mention. And when we do that, listen to me now, and when we give an accurate description based upon what we know, not only from this book, but what we know concerning him as his person and his nature, then the Holy Spirit will come and illuminate that truth right through us. Why? Because he will never verify an error. He will never endorse a lie. He'll never support or verify something that is inaccurate concerning the nature of Jesus Christ. One of the functions of the Holy Spirit then, as Jesus talks about him, is to preserve you and to preserve me from error in what we relate to others from our own experiential knowledge. See, if you get into a conversation with somebody 
and say, well, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, uh, l- let me tell you what, uh, Jesus uh, showed up in my room last night, and um, he and I sat down, we had a nice long talk, and then, and then he just transported me to heaven, and I was there for about four days, and I, and, and I saw things, and I, I sat down with Elijah, and I sat down with Enoch, and uh, that's inaccurate. Everything about that is inaccurate. And you'll be on your own talking nonsense. And the only thing that will empower you is a demon spirit. Why? Because you're not going to give accurate representation of Jesus Christ as he's revealed in the word and in your life. Your experience with him must agree with the experience of the word. So the Spirit of God will preserve you from error in what you relate from your own personal knowledge, your own experience. He will inform you of that which you cannot know except by the revelation of the Word. So the more you study this, and the more you live in communion and fellowship with Christ by the Holy Spirit, the more you will have an accurate representation and an accurate testimony concerning who he is. It'll make you all that more qualified. It'll make you all that more efficient in the declaration of who Jesus is. The world, let me just say this, has a misunderstanding and a misapprehension of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. I mean, if you get 20 people on the street and you tell them, you ask them, and they're not believers, you say, well, who's Jesus? Well, he's a prophet. Well, he was a good man. Well, Jesus is like Buddha. Well, Jesus and Buddha and Confucius. Well, Jesus and Muhammad and Jesus and Allah and Jesus and... You can even ask religious people. They'll give you a wrong understanding of who he is. Don't ask the Jehovah's Witness who Jesus is. They'll tell you that he is uh, formerly, previously, before he became Jesus, that he was the Archangel Michael. Don't ask a Mormon. They'll tell you he was the spirit brother of Lucifer. Are you understanding what I'm saying tonight? There are only one group of people who are called upon and who have the right and the privilege and the authority to declare the truth concerning him, those who really know him. And the world has a misunderstanding, therefore not only do they have a misunderstanding, but they have a misapprehension. What does it mean to apprehend? It means to lay hold of something. They have a misapprehension of who Jesus is. Who is going to give them a right understanding? Shove your neighbor and tell him you are. So then the correction to their confusion must come from someone who's in association with him. If I want to know about somebody and I can't get to him, I'm going to get to somebody as close as I can to him. Well, tell, hey, hey, I can't, tell me about him. Tell me about that person. And if they really know them, oh, this is good. I'll get a correct understanding about the person. Now, if they're fronting and don't really know them, and they're just saying they know them, but they don't really know them, I'm going to get propaganda. I'm going to get Somebody going to sell me what's called, we used to call wolf tickets. So, you know, it's not the real deal. I'm going to get a facsimile. I'm going to get something that's not accurate. I'm going to get some error in there. But if I ask somebody who knows that person, I'm going to get an accurate depiction and a representation and an explanation and description of who that person is. Guess what? You already know where I went. You are the ones who are called upon to give an accurate description of who Jesus is. Because you know him. You've been chosen to give voice to the Spirit's witness of Christ. 
as he speaks to you and through you. The very moment that you were introduced to Jesus Christ, you then became responsible for telling others who he really is. And so he says to you, you also must testify about me because you've been with me from the beginning of your revelation of who I am. Stand to your feet. 